Hello Bart, my name is Chris and I'm doing a doing a quick video reply to your recent video that you entitled Q&A, last one before Christmas. You posted this on December 21st and so I'm just going to run through it and make some comments or critique and um, because there's some areas that I do agree with you on some matters and then there's some areas where I, I disagree with so it would be redundant if I just went down and agreed with everything you said. I think you have enough people doing that that have been watching you. And um, so I'm going to question some things you said that I think uh, warrant more explanation. So, uh, um, yeah, for, for one, you know, the, the information about calories, I agree with it. I, I think it's, an op it's a topic not, not spoken about often enough. And it's a controversial topic because I, you know, a lot of people haven't talked about it. And um, But it's true that... As you say, the, the calories, or you refer to calories, you're talking about, uh, I believe you meant, you specified somewhere in the video that calories really to do with uh, measuring heat, heat energy. And, um, you know, macronutrients are not just, as you indicated, burned in the body. The same uh, it depends on other digestive cofactors, they're, they're metabolized. They are, and it depends on the body's needs, of course, and, and um, iron stores, fiber intake that goes along with it. And what are those specific macronutrients that the body might particularly need at, at one moment or another. That's going to affect the the, um, the absorption rate of, of different nutrients. So anyway, I agree with you there, but, um, but I want to focus more on disagreeing because I don't want this to be redundant. Uh, for, um, so I'm going to roll this video at about an hour and 24 minutes and 29 seconds into the video. I'll start it there and then pause it. There's a real difference between survive and thrive. Yes, we absolutely have genes in place. We have strategies in place that have been selected for uh, because of the way the environment has changed around us fairly rapidly and fairly often in our genetic history. Right. So uh, you start by referring to you know the difference between surviving and thriving. And, um, and then you go on to mention we have genes in place, comma. It's, it's within the same breath. You say, yes, we have genes in place. We have strategies in place that have been selected for because of the way the environment has changed around. So I question this because, and I think you know, uh, I think you know that um, evolution, adaptation, is a result of random genetic mutations, and then they may be more or less selected for it depending on what provides a reproductive advantage in a given environment. But it, this, this is something that I'd, I'd be careful with because you're saying we have genes in place. Okay, we have strategies in place. Okay, so do you mean we have our ancestors evolved with genes that created a capacity to create strategies? Because strategies is a conscious process. That's not an unconscious process. That's, that's not – strategies are directional. It's very. You don't you don't have a strategy that you evolve. I, I don't know if you're setting the tone for people to infer that we have some predator strategies in place that that we evolve that we have some natural predator instincts or something along these lines that we have this strategy that we evolved to be able to kindle fire or fashion tools, wrap weapons and, and use them and, and strategize how to hunt. I don't know because. I would argue that humans have no predator reflexes, that humans are not hardwired uh, as, as, as natural predators or carnivores. Uh, but I, I, yeah, it's nebulous what you're saying. It's not a falsifiable statement because you're not being specific. But anyway, I, I think that you're setting a tone that where people can just kind of agree and kind of relate to what you're saying. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit inaccurate. All right. Um, all right. And then you go on to say, you know, after that, we have strategies in place that have been Selected for because the way the environment has changed around us fairly rapidly and fairly often in our genetic history. Well, uh, the the conservative genes associated with, with digestion, vision, uh, hearing, these important vital functions, uh, these don't tend to change drastically very quickly. So the environment may. It doesn't necessarily mean that our ancestors adapted to the specific environment that changed quickly. In fact, I would argue that human ancestors adopted tool use, adopted fire kindling, these techniques, these strategies, as you admit, they're strategies. They're not biological adaptations. They're not genetic adaptations. They are adopting tools and techniques passed down through culture, not, not evolution, not biological evolution anyway. And there, it's a very important distinction there. 
and I'll just uh, continue. Um, we have the ability to survive um, all kinds of self-abuse in terms of what we put into our bodies for fuel. We can True. subsist for quite a few years at a time on a diet that is not designed to support our health. I, I somewhat agree. We can subsist on a diet that might not be opt optimized, and, and there you're just subsisting. You're not, you're not thriving. You, you, you clarified this, the difference between survive and thrive. But then you said a diet that we're designed. Again, that's, that's religion, really. That's not adaptation, but you're saying it and you're repeating it. And so I, that's why I'm questioning. Do you really... You really believe this? Because that oh. happiness, longevity, well-being, uh, and veganism is one of those. Okay, we are absolutely obligate carnivores. We are designed to eat the flesh of animals. Yeah, it's a bold statement, especially when you're you're emphatically saying that humans are designed as obligate, not just carnivores, but obligate carnivores. And uh, I would I would argue that uh, humans are biological frugivores. That in a biological sense, not psychological, not sociological, not in terms of technology, uh, that humans are optimized or have co-evolved, our ancestors have co-evolved, to, to, uh, with, with the ability to digest fruit and, um, and most effectively. Why do I say this? Well, based on really the abundance of, of evidence in the scientific literature that in which plant foods, specifically succulent fruit, for instance, is inversely associated with those common diseases that, that meat is associated more with um, and, and, and digestive disorders and from cancer to obesity to heart disease etc you find that plants are inversely associated with these conditions and meat is not so if humans are biologically adapted to be able to eat meat somehow so unexplained, really, it, it does warrant more explanation here, but if that were the case, then all these diseases wouldn't be associated with me. And I know that you would argue that because you'd probably go to uh, refer to grass-fed meat, organic, and we can go this, we can do that with blueberries as well, put them right next to each other, etc. But uh, that's kind of getting off topic. I'll go on from here. That is what our body expects us to put in. That is what our metabolic design is. Yeah, I disagree. And uh, that, I think, warrants uh, a succinct explanation, a summary, not, you know, that you, you talked about in another video. Because I watched the other video that you alluded to, uh, and I didn't get a succinct um, answer that I was, I was um, okay with. Um, I'm going to skip over to an hour and 32 minutes into this video, uh, because you, you're kind of going into different topics and... Um, here I'll resume at a minute and 32, an hour and 32 minutes. Religion, mate. Stop fucking eating! Whoops, I don't mean to put you on the spot there. It's in this queue. Uh, let's go an hour and 37 minutes into it. All right. It's anecdotal, but I think anecdotal stuff can be uh, peppered into an argument to help support an argument, not to... Oh, that's, that's actually a good point. And I think some people, they'll either go on one side or another, they'll use too many anecdotes or not any at all. But as you seem to have a mature understanding about the research, I'm convinced of that much. Uh, I, I question some of your, your judgments about certain topics. But yeah, the anecdotal evidence, sometimes the research is anemic in a given field, especially in nutrition. It's very underdeveloped science. I'm not saying it's not a hard science or not it couldn't be a hard science, but it's an underdeveloped science and that sometimes anecdotal evidence where there's there's not sufficient um, evidence in scientific literature is warranted. All right, that's a good point. To prove an argument to help support it, and it's this. 84% of everyone who ever becomes a vegan stops being a vegan within the first five years. 84%. Well, why is that? Well, I'll stab at that. So uh, perhaps for similar reasons that most people who consume meat are overweight and will likely not regain normal weight after that. So let me clarify. Uh, just because 84% of people who become, become vegan, um, so you've talked about obligate carnivores, and that's carnivores are more of a biological classification. Vegan is not a, a, a biological classification. Uh, so I think you're kind of poisoning the well a little bit there. Um, 
setting setting the tone there for for something that that somebody couldn't argue for. But anyway, you're saying 84% of those who ever become vegan stop being vegan within, vegan within the first five years. That doesn't mean that vegan isn't a healthy diet or that a plant-based diet isn't a healthy diet because most people are not healthy. So that actually makes sense. Um, and I, and I, I say that you know, for similar reasons, most people who consume meat are overweight. And so there is evidence that uh, among the, the, the broad dietary classifications, not strictly a scientific classification or biological classification, we look at the vegan diets, we look at the vegetarian diets, we look at omnivorous diets, we're not even going to carnivorous diets. But there is a linear relationship in which uh, the more men intake, the more weight gain. The less meat that's in the diet, the less people are uh, prone to gaining excess weight. So to be clear, there's a linear association, linear association between meat intake and weight gain. So um, I'm looking here at some evidence. Perhaps you've seen these graphs, but in case you haven't, there's an article entitled um, uh, Omnivores had the highest prevalence of overweight and obesity compared to individuals following dietary patterns with less meat. Um, this is by Turner, McGreevy, Mendez, and uh, Cremarco, 2017. Uh, section 2, I'll read right from it, uh, the Epic Panacea Study, an offshoot of the Epic Oxford Study found a positive association between total meat consumption and weight gain even after adjusting for energy intake. An increase in 250 grams a day of meat led to a 2 kilogram weight gain after 5 years. Uh, that again is from, actually the, the title of the study is Probably, Probability of an Obese Person uh, attaining normal body weights, cohort study using electronic health records. So you might question you know, how reliable those records are, but um, anyway. Um, in summary, um, my position is that humans are biological frugivores, that there are some humans that are behavioral carnivores, but that there is no natural predator instincts, no genetic instructions as obligate carnivores. There's no evidence of this. And that's a bold statement to make. So I think it warrants some, some explanation. And I know there are exceptions, but I think you're, you're, you're trying to argue that the exception is a rule because there are some people who uh, don't tolerate fibrous foods as well as others. But healthy people who don't have digestive disorders, uh, perhaps there are some, I know the FODMAP diet is appropriate for many people. Uh, you know, I know irritable bowel syndrome um, and, um, there's a fructose intolerance type, but even in these conditions, if fruit and, and, and fibrous foods are being taken in gradually, multiple meals, digested most effectively, that's the way for everybody. But if that's the case and they're careful about the way they, they take in the meals, not taking in just you know, occasional meals, one, two, three meals a day, this is just a human construct uh, or cultural construct. Uh, but if, if digesting, taking in food gradually, multiple meals, smaller meals, it's absorbed more efficiently, more effectively. Um, if you're doing this responsibly, then uh, a plant-based diet is generally more healthy. That's my argument. And, uh